You tell me the name of this. What is the name? In Kikamba. In Kikamba, you don't, you don't do fish farming in <laughs> Kikamba land. So to me, new people don't know this. I don't know this in Kikamba. Anybody who knows about it? Let me tell me in your language. Pachonga. Pachonga. Pachonga is a Zulua. Zinaka kama Samaki. Omena. Omena. Omena dogo. Oh, I knew you obviously you have to call it Omena dogo. <laughs> okay. Okay, back to the knowledge about this. This is what we call shrimp milatika. Yeah. Shrimp. shrimp. Milatika. Uh, the local name they call it Ochonga. And then I want to tell any farmer that is venturing into fish farming, especially if you are a starter, make sure you just have this. And the reason is because the younger fish tend to need the need of omega-3, the fatty acids, which are uh, better than the ones that are introduced from plants. So let's talk about feeding. And uh, we are going to demonstrate using our Pachonga. The advantage is that they are good uh, in terms of uh, nutritional value then you can easily add it to any other feed for example if you have the the mash that is the um, wheat bran if you make uh, the maize jam you can mix this and uh, it depends with the size of fish that you are feeding is that true yes because uh when you cannot feed this one to uh one month tilapia they will eat but not as much so you need maybe to grind it to make sure that it's so so come with me come we show you when feeding them you can go the other end so that you can capture what you want to talk about here so here is a pond measuring 8 by 20 and uh, you can see have a look oh. come on come on and we do this then come, then just come. So we are trying to call our fish to come and eat. So you realize from where you are standing, we are standing, uh, it is a one area. That is, the feeding spot is one. And the reason why I'll encourage any farmer doing farming, in terms of fish farming, you should feed them under one spot because the fish will always know where they are feeding from. Advantage number two, if you are installing a recirculatory system, I'll tell you to make sure where you are feeding them from. That is where you place your recirculatory system from. Because it is this point where the waste from fish, which has not been consumed, is ate by, uh, is, uh, accumulate. a, it accumulates actually. So you need to know that. Fish feeding has some schedule, depending on, uh, factors like the stocking density which you have stocked in the water you must consider to know that how many volume uh, what uh, percentage how many cages will you be feeding your fish Regard, regarding the following one you must consider the size of fish the type of fish what are you going to feed them for example right now my tilapia are well fed they don't want my food uh, they are disappointing me however I can see they are eating so another thing you need to consider when you're feeding uh, especially tilapia at younger age when they are small you'll have to know if the feeds are able to float because i have seen some feeds which are floating yes but they have a lot of fats which tend to make blood for the fish and then they die very fast so I'll encourage any farmer, make sure you have your own uh, maize jam, wheat bran, so that when you're starting your fing fingerlings, you don't have a problem. You just come up with your own fish pond. Let's go. Come walk with me in another pond. I think we talked about the, 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 vines. the vines. We talked the about them. Vines. We have talked about this net here. Have a look. The net to prevent any uh, bird, especially the kingfish. Uh, I have seen some in the other farm. They were caught. So you also need to have this to prevent that. 
Uh, they also feed on uh, our. Oh, sorry, our fish. fish. Oh, oh. The, yeah, pork also eats the fish. So you need to do this. That one will uh, really help you. Come with me. Let's talk about the talking dolphins in this in this pond. Ah. Uh, Unfortunately, we're not going to give the exact fig figures in terms of stocking density. What is stocking density? This is the number of fish that you give, you, you place in a pond. For example, we can see the fish yeah, eating. Yeah. So, uh, a number of factors in consideration to the stocking density are, one, the type of fish, the size of the pond. I'm not going to tell you how many pieces should you stock at this point. Because, uh, well, when doing with the, uh, Climate Smart Aquaculture, we are not going to give you the stocking density because uh, we are going to improve on uh, water quality, we are going to improve on feeding quality. So, we'll give you a rough estimation, but uh, not uh, the normal standard of, uh, we always uh, told or we were taught by FAO that it should be four pieces per meter square, which is not going to be economical for a farmer. So that's why we are not going to talk about that. We'll only give you figures in regards to how many, uh, uh, how, what is the water level you are going to recirculate so that you avoid seeing fish dying, so that you're able to know and uh, to capture how many are you going